All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 92, and today I will be revealing some extremely important and often forgotten or otherwise completely ignored details about the Great Pyramid of Giza that are critical to understanding how this structure may have operated. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel. TheLandOfChem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at TheLandOfChem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So to begin, here is an article by Zahi Hawass discussing restorations within the Great Pyramid of Giza, which were actually underway again this month and have now been completed and the structure is open again to the public. And I very much look forward to doing a return visit to the Great Pyramid of Giza to make a comparative analysis between what I saw before and after these recent restorations. And I will now quote here from this article. We know that each visitor to the pyramids and tombs gives out about an average of 20 grams of water through their breath and perspiration. This ruins the plasters, ruins the plasters that cover part of the Grand Gallery by accumulating salts which leach to the plaster. The walls of the Grand Gallery of the Pyramid were also found to be covered with up to two centimeters of salt. So here is an admission by Hawass that the Grand Gallery was also sealed in a plaster coating compound, as discussed in episode 82, chemically resistant coating compounds and calcium sulfate. However, most, if not all of this compound has since been completely removed as I have not seen any traces of it in any of my recent site visits. Also, it has been 25 years since this restoration in 1998, and there have been hundreds of thousands of people that have gone through the Grand Gallery since then, and not one single salt crystal has accumulated since then. So this explanation, that the salt is somehow caused by the breath of tourists, and this claim of 20 grams of water per person is absolute nonsense. We know that the quote unquote queen's chamber was also covered in an original layer of salt. And that chamber, as you can see here down at the bottom, was never open to the public until after this 1998 restoration. As you can see here down at the bottom in the same article, the first subterranean and second queen's chamber pyramid chambers will be opened to the public for the first time. You can also see here that there was a quote unquote mechanical removal of graffiti, cleaning of the grand gallery walls, and the subterranean and queen's chambers were also quote unquote cleaned, i.e. removing the original calcium sulfate coating that had developed during the operation of the Great Pyramid. And as presented in episode 82, that layer of salt found in the quote unquote Queen's Chamber or Extraction Chamber was analyzed in 1978 and found to be composed of carbonate, i.e. limestone, sodium chloride, and calcium sulfate, i.e. gypsum or plaster of Paris. And this coating layer developed after the first cycle of producing a dilute solution of sulfuric acid within these two chambers, the Grand Gallery and the Extraction Chamber. And this layer, being insoluble in dilute sulfuric acid, prevented any further reaction between the acidic product and the limestone walls of the chamber, protecting them from any further corrosion damage. And I am proposing that the salt and plaster that once covered the Queen's and Grand Gallery chambers was also removed during this 1998 restoration of the Grand Gallery and other internal chambers. As both of these chambers would have been coated 
with this non-reactive sealing layer to prevent further corrosion damage during the chemical manufacturing process. And here is an image of this anhydrous calcium sulfate salt that was also discovered coating the lower separation chambers of the Bent Pyramid in Dashur, a topic that I will be returning to in an upcoming video. We have also seen clear evidence of a very thick plaster coating layer that was applied to the interior chamber walls of the final Giza Pyramid, as I just presented in Sunday Site Visit 18 that you can see here and also inside of the central pyramid of Giza as shown in Sunday Site Visit 8. So it appears that all three pyramids of the Giza Plateau were internally coated with a chemically resistant sealer to prevent corrosion damage inside of the structures. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you wanna help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new six degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition purple orchid paper print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. All right, next up, a critical and widely forgotten or completely ignored detail about the shafts inside the quote unquote queen's chamber or extraction chamber that you can see here. But these openings did not look like this originally. They were opened more thoroughly to accommodate the robot used to explore quote unquote Gattenbring's door. However, these shafts were not open to the inside of the chamber originally. They were completely sealed with a layer of stone, and they had to be broken through to expose these shafts. And here is an article by Noel Wheeler in the journal Antiquity Discussing World Archaeology. And Wheeler was the late field director of the Harvard Boston Expedition to Giza. And I quote here, the Queen's Chamber has a pair of unfinished ventilator shafts like those in the King's Chamber, but they were only completed to within less than one H of the chamber walls. Wayman Dixon found them by sounding in 1872 and broke through the remaining thickness of the walls to open them up. And one H or one hand is approximately three inches and other reports have shown approximately two inches. So there was a two inch thick layer of stone that had to be broken through to open up these shafts. They were not originally open to the inside of the chamber. And here is what the Queen's Chamber shaft openings look like before they were widened to accommodate the modern equipment that was used in these explorations. These shafts were completely sealed with stone. A two inch thick layer completely covered these shaft terminations. They were not open to the inside of the chamber. So these two shafts connected to the quote unquote queen's chamber do not reach the outside of the pyramid and they were not open to the inside of the chamber. Exactly the opposite of the air intake shafts in the sulfur furnace. And this is the termination of the Northern air shaft. It was both open to the inside of the chamber and open to the outside of the pyramid. And you can see here, both of the King's chamber or sulfur furnace air shafts were both open to the outside of the pyramid and the inside of the chamber. As I explained in episode 80, and I will put links to episode 80 and episode 82 in the video description below. So just remember, when you are evaluating theories about the function of the Great Pyramid, that it is absolutely impossible for fluids to travel up the Queen's chamber shafts because they were completely sealed with stone on the inside of the chamber. 
And in the opposite direction, it is completely unfeasible for any fluids to flow down the queen's chamber shafts into the chamber because they were completely sealed on the inside with a two inch thick layer of stone. It is absolutely impossible for any fluids to move in or out of the queen's chamber through this shaft system. This chamber here, otherwise known as the queen's chamber, is an extraction chamber for the removal of the dilute sulfuric acid solution. And it is connected through a shaft beneath the niche that you can see here into the extraction shaft and chamber system that has recently been revealed in the Doppler radar scanning of the Great Pyramid. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 92, Unknown Facts About the Great Pyramid of Giza. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, I have a spectacular surprise for Sunday Site Visit 20. This is an episode you do not want to miss. So if this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification bell. Like, comment, and stay tuned if you want to help support the channel. TheLandOfChem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at TheLandOfChem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.